Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I want to talk about this lovely series that I finished a few months ago which is the Memoirs of Lady Trent series by Marie Brennan. This series is a five book series, however there is also one spin-off standalone following I think the granddaughter of our main character from this series that I have not yet read so I won't be including that book in this review obviously maybe once i read that spin-off i will also add a review of that book then afterwards however today the spotlight is on this series as always my reviews are spoiler free and i will start with just a general overview of what this series is about then going into some more negative thoughts and ending with my positive thoughts on the series. So as far as what this series is about, this series is, as I have already mentioned, I believe, a five book series. The first book is A Natural History of Dragons, then we have The Tropic of Serpents, Voyage of the Basilisk, The Labyrinth of Drakes, and Within the Sanctuary of Wings. Overall, I gave all the books in the series, I believe, between 3.5 and Four stars. However, there is one that I did give five stars and that was in the Labyrinth of Drakes. And I have to be honest, this is one of those series where I believe the sum of its parts is more than the single books alone. I just believe that as a whole it works very, very well. Now, what is this about? This is set in a world that is very much inspired by our Victorian times kind of like, I don't know, mid 19th or end 19th century-ish. And we follow our character Isabella, who basically writes all of these books as a series of memoirs of her travels. Hence why the series title, A Memoir of Lady Trent or by Lady Trent. And Isabella is supposed to be like the quintessential Victorian lady type woman. However, she has one big dream and that is to become a naturalist researching dragons. As it so happens in the society that is, as I said, very inspired by Victorian society, she is not really seen as suitable for this scientific endeavor because she is a woman. However, she does not let that stop her and she always finds ways to just kind of um, go on different expeditions and so every single book is a different expedition that she goes on and where she makes very important discoveries about dragons. So that was it in terms of the general overview of what the series is about. So let me just put this up back here and then uh, I will talk about my thoughts. So first, as always, let me start with the negatives. I mean, the big negative for me personally, in terms of my personal enjoyment of the series, um, was, to be honest, kind of the final book. I found the final book a little bit of a letdown because it just didn't have a lot of the elements that I had come to enjoy so much of the other books, uh, which have a lot to do, and I will get to that later, with the author Marie Brennan also um, having been educated as an anthropologist. So she has a background in anthropology and I believe archaeology as well. Uh, and so there was always a very big focus on the different cultures that Isabella travels to on her exhibitions, as well as a scientific focus on how she researches the dragons. And for some reason there was like an element missing in that part of the story for me in the fifth book that just ended up with me being a little bit disappointed in the fifth book. I mean, I still gave it four stars, but especially since it was, you know, right after the one book in the series that I gave five stars to, um, I came from an absolute high and so you know not getting everything I wanted from the last book just kind of you know made me a little bit disappointed but aside from that there's not really that many concrete negative things uh, I have to say about the series there's just one I guess disclaimer I want to put about the series and that is that this series is set as I said in a story that is inspired by our Victorian times because of that, there is also colonialism within this 
series. There's some things that happened within our world that didn't happen within this world. For example, chattel slavery does not exist within this world. But generally speaking, there is this kind of very colonial attitude of our British characters towards other parts of the world. However, Isabella herself never has that attitude. She never really is arrogant towards other cultures. Generally she also does respect different religions and traditions from the different cultures that she travels to. However, at the same time, you know, she still is this white POV person. And she also does say herself a lot of times her respecting different traditions doesn't necessarily come from her, you know, being respectful towards the traditions themselves, but her being respectful towards the people gains her access to the dragons that she really wants to research and if being respectful doesn't help her then she sometimes also just you know ignores things and enters maybe sacred or possibly sacred places so there are elements of that within the series um, however i think those elements also quote unquote make sense within the story and they're not like presented as oh of course she would do that because the stupid indigenous people and why would they have those traditions and so on um but it's just you know isabella is not a perfect character and so she does those things but also she describes a lot of cultures from a very white point of view so i just kind of wanted to have that said i personally think it's very well dealt with for the most part within the series as i said um, marie brennan does have a background in anthropology so she is very familiar or was very familiar and was um, very aware of the problems that could come with a lot of the subject matter that she's writing about um, so I think for me it was very well dealt with. However, I also would understand why some people might not be interested in reading this type of story. And so that's why I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit <laughs> at this point. Um, I hope my rambling just now made sense. Uh, but yeah, so now moving on. The things that I loved about this series. As I said, the main thing I really loved about this series were kind of the anthropological approach to storytelling a little bit because Isabella does spend a lot of times in very different cultures. Those cultures aren't necessarily mirror images of any cultures within our world. However, you can generally recognize, okay, this part of the world is supposed to be Africa adjacent. This part of the world is supposed to be South Pacific adjacent. And with the way those cultures are described, I mean, I of course can't talk from the point of view of being someone from these cultures. So uh, I would go seek out own voices reviewers what they think about the portrayal. But generally speaking, from an outside point of view, I thought the portrayal mostly was very respectful. And I also just really loved how you could tell that as i said it's not really a mirror image of one specific culture but it's just looking at how different cultures in different parts of the world work and how they interconnect and then just taking elements to just kind of you know give the feeling of this is how it works here and sometimes also just taking elements in terms of for example kinship how kinship works in different cultures um, and, you know, just implementing that into the world building and into how the cultures are described. I hope that once again made sense, but I'm just trying not to nerd out too much right now so that you can still kind of get what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I just absolutely love the cultural parts of everything. I also really loved the scientific parts. I loved how nerdy Isabella could be and how much detail was paid to the scientific process. Uh, I mean, to be honest, in terms of the world building, in terms of the bigger world building, because there's like this, I don't know, ancient society, I guess, um, that supposedly has gone down ages ago. Um, I mean, not supposedly, that it has gone down ages ago and we only have ruins of it now and so on, or they only have ruins of it now. Um, in terms of that, I was like, eh, it doesn't interest me too much. 
I guess maybe that was also the reason why I didn't enjoy the last book too much because this ancient civilization really was the focus of the last book but aside from that I was like yeah it's fine it's okay um, the world building in that regard uh, and the last thing that I absolutely loved was Isabella as a character herself I loved her stubbornness I loved how assured she is of herself how self-confident she is how she doesn't take shit from anyone and how she just always finds a way and it's just like oh so you're not gonna let me on this expedition well watch me i'll just do it myself some other way uh, i love that i also loved her relationship with other characters i loved her relationship with um some of the female characters that you see especially in the first few books I loved the romance aspects um, of the books. Um, I don't want to say too much about this <laughs> because spoilers, but there's some parts there that just really made me love the books. And yeah, the characters were just great in general. And so I think that's once again it for this review. Um, mostly I feel this review was a review where I just rambled a hell of a lot. Um, and maybe I, I just I just hope I made myself understood with what I wanted to say but yeah overall it's just a great series it's a very fast to read series at least in my opinion also all the books are like between 350 and 400 pages so they're quite short for adult fantasy and yeah, with all of that said, if you have read the series, please tell me in the comments down below what are your thoughts on it. If you haven't read the series, are you gonna pick it up? Or did I just make you not want to pick it up right now because I nerded out too much? If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries. Read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or genderqueer person per month. Will be left linked down below as well, so go and check those out. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye!